Well, that was weird. <laughs> yeah, we just finished uh, Over the Garden Wall, and now it makes sense. I know, right? <laughs> I mean, I was so confused before, but then when you get to that ending, the last few episodes, it's like, got it, nailed it. It's all about the lies. Yep. Beautiful lies. Yeah, we have beautiful, no idea what that was about. Lies. Um, I liked it. Uh, <laughs> I did enjoy it. I loved it. it. I yeah. could. I want this. I need to own it. I, we were, we were watching it on Amazon, um, but I yeah, need, we need this on like. Blu-ray I need it. Yeah, I need a copy of this. Yeah. Uh, Bad. So, so we should talk about where it goes. They of course come across other uh, uh, strange misadventures and stuff, and then we get. Uh, the Shyamalan twist, it was during current times! No. Uh, kinda, no. sort of, maybe in that the looked 70s like the or 80s. 70s. Yeah. I don't even um, think that looked like the 80s, that looked like the 70s. But you know what I mean, me. not in, like, whatever witch-burning times or whatever they were kind of indicating it took place in. Um, so, uh... You know, they did more than just burn witches back then, okay? No, no, they didn't. They imprisoned debtors. Okay, there's that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so these two kids, you know, they go and, uh... Uh, I'm gonna sneeze here so you take over. Uh, yeah, so the two kids go and find, uh, an old abandoned shack. There seems to be a ton of these around <laughs> in this nope, world. I never came. Okay. But, uh, uh, and, uh, they meet up with this, uh, like, sort of scullery wench, or I don't know what would you say, like, milkmaid type girl who's like, Hey, look out! You can't be in here, otherwise Auntie Whispers will get you. Oh, which great name! <laughs> they immediately like, ooh, the I second, like that name! Yeah, the, the second... <laughs> She said Auntie Whispers. I was just like, ooh. I was like, that just sounds bad. Um, and so, yeah, they hide in a basket of turtles. Black turtles. Black turtles. And then Auntie Whispers comes in looking a hell of a lot like... Uh, Spirited away. Yeah, ba what was it? Baba Yaga? Or uh, why am I blanking on her name? Something uh, Baba. Uh, you Baba. You Baba. Uh, yeah, from Spirited Away. And... Um, yeah, uh, through a comedy of errors, um, basically they try to trick you, Baba, lock themselves in a room with the milkmaid, and then this whole time the uh, you, Baba's been ringing this bell, or I should say Auntie Whisper's been ringing this bell and tells the girl, the bell commands you. I'm wondering if she's like Pacifica Northwest yeah, cousin that's or something. Yeah, I was too. Um, and... So they lock themselves away, and Yubaba's just like, ah, I don't have the bell! And the kids are like, aha, so we've saved her. And she's like, no, you don't get it! She's out of her mind! She's gonna kill you! And the next thing you know, it's shitting bricks time. Because, like, the girl just... I, I can't even just... It just... Be nasty teeth and <laughs> big eyes! And it, it was scary. It was very scary. If we're gonna go through every, like, because we watched, like, four of these, the very one's gonna be... I was just gonna say, like, three sentences of, like, the last well, couple of episodes, you're like... You had the fucking the sneeze, okay? No, and it, it didn't come, so... Fine, fine then, then you tell the fucking story. Uh, okay, so... Whatever, they get her back to normal. -ish. I guess they banished the spirit away with the bell, which you're wondering why the auntie didn't do that. But, uh... I think the auntie was enjoying having a servant. <laughs> probably, but then they make her kind of good at the end. That was a little confusing. Um, I'll imagine something confusing in this special. Uh, but then they go and, um... Uh, uh, the brother is goofing off too much and he goes into his dreamland and he comes across the beast. And the beast wants to... Take him and turn him into this kind of wood that keeps the uh, lantern. Yeah, the lantern lit that the woodsman has had, uh, and we find out that apparently the spirit of his daughter is in the lantern. But then it's discovered that actually the beast needs the lantern lit so that he can stay alive, uh, and that the spirit of the daughter is probably never even in there. And there's a flashback that you forgot to mention, you ass. Well, I'm just doing the Cliff Note version here, uh, and we find cliff out. Cliff Notes. That, yes, this isn't even a small garden wall. <laughs> And we go to, uh, but we also find out that, uh, uh, Wirt and his brother, they were, who confusingly says, you know, it's, it's you and your dad, which, uh, stepbrothers, maybe? I, I found that line kind of confusing, too. So, we find well, out maybe, that it's, <laughs> maybe it's like whenever our parents, like, were upset at us, and all of a sudden it became, you know what your son did? Yeah, maybe, yeah, but <laughs> I'll hear you When you're in trouble, like it's that. the, when parents, you know, when their kids are in trouble, it's never, you know what our son did, it's, you, you know, know what your, your son, son did, yeah. you know what your daughter did? Suddenly, like, 
the person talking completely disowns. <laughs> yeah, we clearly got this from you. Um, so uh, he's trying to impress this girl with this cassette, and then he gets really embarrassed and doesn't want her to hear it. And then they fall into pretty much this lake, and we were both thinking the same thing. So, like, is this all purgatory? Are they dead? Is this the afterlife? Uh, but then they, they defeat the beast, or the, the woodsman, I should say, defeats the beast by blowing out the lantern. They wake uh, up. They, they, they get the bird, uh, or, or the, yeah, he gets the bird, the scissors, so that uh, they can be oh, turned back to normal. And, yeah, then they wake up, and he gets along with the girl, and then it's like, oh, and here's what happened to all the other over-the-garden-wall characters, and, like... Again, and the so, whole time the frog says it's beautiful lies, so they're probably dead. I'm only saying they're in the river. Maybe I mean you see, or they were hit by the, the train in the flashback. That was kind of my thought. Yeah, that was my first thought. Uh, but they wake up, you know, in the river too. So it's like maybe it was a dream. I don't know. Um, and it just kind of stops. Uh, and, and even the uh, even there is like, and they all live happily after everything's good. Blah blah blah. But over the garden wall, like even he's like, yeah, you don't really care about it. You know the drill. <sighs> Um, you know, the one thing, I, I'm not gonna act like I totally understand all this or what it's initially trying to do. I mean, I, I enjoy it a great deal. Let's understand. Uh, it's a bunch of folk tales. No, what I'm saying is that the one thing I didn't get into, and, and you kind of said too, I don't know if I liked them being in a more contemporary time, being in the 70s or 80s or wherever they were. I didn't hate it. I'm just not sure. After that episode, I'm kind of like, I don't know if I needed it. Yeah, that. why was it needed? I mean, I, the explanations were cute for why they have the costumes on and why he's got the candy in his pocket. I do and, love, I'm an elephant! I mean, that, yeah. that was great. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think of the grand not, I don't know if it was a story. Needed. Yeah. Um, you know, me that wasn't, you were saying that, like, I guess the guy that put this together wanted to be even darker, and then they had him lighten it yeah, up Yeah, I guess bit. the story goes it was supposed to be kind of like a big Halloween special, but he didn't quite have... A full narrative, and then as production went along, you know how things change as, you know, you're working out the kinks, and, uh, yeah, I guess it became a little more lighthearted, a little more comedic, but he still wanted scary moments. I, I There were scary moments. That, mm. that whole bit with the crazy milkmaid and her being possessed, and I was like, wow, if I were a little kid, I'd be shitting bricks right now. <laughs> like, uh, I would just, ugh. So, but, yeah, I get... Like, some people out there are just like, well, it's Dante's Inferno. And there's nods to Dante's Inferno. I don't but see it's it as not, like... But it's not just, it's Dante's Inferno. It's not like, like Oh, it, Brother, Where Art Thou, where it's like, that's obviously the Odyssey, you know, like, scene it's, for scene. It's got a few allusions to Dante's Inferno. They start off lost in the woods. There is a Beatrice, but Beatrice and Virgil in Dante's Inferno... So, They're like the only main characters, so, right? but I guess yeah, yeah no but brother. I but I guess in the, I guess Beatrice being the guide is kind of like that. I, I guess there is a ferry if you want to go with the steamboat with the frogs, and there is kind of a frozen lake at the not a frozen lake, but no, things no, there, are there's cold a frozen at the end. Well, I was gonna say yeah, there's a frozen lake in the story. I, I d but there's d but does the he end. defeat the devil in Dante's Inferno? I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't think he did. I thought he like climbed off the devil and then. Slid, there was like a river of forgetfulness or something, and then he emerged from the river, and it's like Easter and God and yay and like that. That does kind of sound like this ending too, though, emerging from you know the lake. Emerging, yeah, emerging from the lake. But in the beginning of Dante's Inferno, there was like a three beast thing, and people were like, oh, it's like the beast. But in this one, the beast is also like kind of Lucifer. And like, yeah, it's is it even Lucifer? And you can't really. You don't really kill Lucifer, at least I don't remember in Dante's Inferno, and... Clearly we need to read Dante's think any, Inferno yeah, again. <laughs> I don't think any of these really represent hardcore, like, the circles of hell, either. They seem like little... They, they seem like American folktale vignettes. Yeah. Um, so, it... I, 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 I don't know. I'm not saying it's not to... Yeah, I'm sure he's got nods to Dante's Inferno, but it's not like, Oh, it's Dante's Inferno! It, no, there's, like, more to it than that. Um, yeah, you know, the one that I... And it's so bizarre, this is the one I like the most. The one out of all of them that I like the most was the one that you could argue was the biggest waste of time was when he was dreaming, and it's like the old 1920s or even 10s the, cartoons. The care they took 
in recreating that old school United Artists sort of like early 30s like kind of animation. Especially the backgrounds. That was amazing. Um, but you know, what I liked about what I liked about that episode too is that a lot of it, like I said, kind of like Wizard of Oz and where the wild things are, it seemed very much to let like kind of the emotions of a scene guide the way, not really the logic. And that one seemed the most like that to suddenly have like you know, here's a scary thing coming, but then like you know, oh now the beautiful lady of the clouds comes, but only you can go, not the brother. The brother is being taken, but it just seems like sort of like the ups and downs of like a kid's emotions that can just change on a whim sort of directed that episode and i really like that i sort of like going through those just spontaneous like emotional changes uh, it just was so it. much like those old cartoons like well that's what those cartoons were like too yeah yeah i mean and we used to watch them they used to rerun them on like nickelodeon and stuff and you know kids networks back in the early 80s and yeah it was like kind of nostalgic just seeing that style of animation again i haven't seen that like a uh, spoof of that done so well in a long time. Yeah, well, especially, like I said, something about, like, the the way the backgrounds were, and they were a little, uh, they were, they were a little shadowy, but a little grainy, too. Uh, and there's always yeah. something, it's like, even though kind they're bright, even feel. though they're bright and colorful and, and the everything. Lo the loose animation and the sort of repetitive quality when he's jumping over the little, uh, uh, the holes in the yeah. clouds and, you know, the big bad cloud going, dur, 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 the thunderstorm, it just, I, all you needed was kind of like the Popeye voice attention. Good, I'm gonna go get you. Well, it's kind of the cloud things I don't like too, just yeah. a deeper version. Like of that. Bluto or. <laughs> but I think too, there's something about uh, those old cartoons. I sort of got it here too, which I really liked. Is that even though yes, they're bright and colorful and everything's dancing and stuff, there's kind of a creep value to them as well. Oh yeah. Uh, especially like because a lot of them back then, like, they, they didn't like have enough yeah. light overexposing it they, and stuff like that. They all look so. like Campbell Soup Kids. It's weird. Yeah, but like, I mean, it, it just something about like well, it says. They were, very, they were more led by the emotion, like the bad guys were going to be really Those old bad. cartoons all had a nightmare fuel aspect to it. In fact, most American folk art, which this whole show is picking from pieces of American folk art over the past like 150 years, have a creep factor to it. If you've ever seen old Halloween costumes, oh yeah, there. You had like you have not seen terror. So like, go look up vintage Halloween costumes from like the 30s and 40s. They're just uncomfortable. Yeah, they, they <laughs> all look like something out of the fucking Purge or something. Like it, it's you just look at them, you're just like, wow, that is not the last thing I want to see <laughs> before I die. Um. So yeah, I mean, I guess. No part of me was expecting, like, any kind of explanation about what this all is or it, where it was leading to or anything like that. So, it, but like I said, something about what, when they went to the, the 70s, or, you know, the more contemporary time, I guess I felt like, oh, now we're kind of in a, a normal cartoon. Yeah, there's weird things, but it's like... It's kind of just, oh, the boy wants to impress the girl, and oh, is Though, the girl going to find out? And then at the end, oh, you're okay, and oh, they are going to get along. I, and something, I, did, I didn't hate it, but I was like, I did not feel that was needed. Yeah, but I did love the commentary on how Halloween used to be more fun. Like, did you notice that the cops are just like, hey, what are you doing there, kids? Ah, just kidding. Yeah. Like, there's this sense of, like, nobody gives a shit, whereas nowadays, like, hey, you have... Hey, no running! Ah, just kidding. Happy yeah, Halloween! Like, nowadays, you have to have, like, parental escorts to leave the house. Like, I'm like, how did we survive in the 80s? Like, it's like Halloween nowadays is, like, done by, like, 4 p.m. I'm well, like, I remember trick-or-treating at night. Well, remember they did, like, they made up that story about, like, you know, whatever, the guys that put, like, razor blades in the candy, and, like, there has never been a report of that. So it's like, and they had some bullshit back then, too, but you were, I know you're talking about where it's like, you gotta trick or treat whatever at, at four or five o'clock or, or three and i'm like why that's not that's fun. not halloween that's so not hallows eve not all hallows early afternoon yeah the uh, fuck <laughs> so no i like that too uh no reason our children like veal <laughs> but uh the the whole special i, I really like um like i said the, the only thing i couldn't get into i didn't hate i just couldn't get into it was the uh, the more contemporary time stuff um, I, I liked it well enough because the biggest mistake, the, like the the biggest mistake, would have been setting it 2015 or 14 or th like post millennium. By setting it in the 70s, you still kind of had a feeling like this is still sort of out of place, out of time. Like I couldn't quite pinpoint. It. I'm like, all right, there's a tape recorder there. It says space battle. Like I'm guessing mid to late 70s. Like 
Star Wars-ish, but at first I thought maybe it was the 60s, and I'm like, nah, it looks like 70s. So like, it, it still has the girl, this kind of The girl of in the bunny outfit kind of had like a 70s or 60s like dress yeah. on or something like that. I'm thinking, I'm thinking 70s. If there's, if that's supposed to be kind of Star Wars in like 76 or something, like yeah. When um, did Star Wars come out? Was that 75 or 77? I don't know, but late, mid to late 70s. But uh, yeah, so it, it's one of those things. I wasn't like, oh, this ruined it, but it was the one thing where I was like, well, this is. Now we're in a normal cartoon, like a normal cartoon you would see anywhere on Cartoon Network, which Cartoon Network is still strange, and they show a lot of weird stuff, so it, the, it's not like that. But the irony of it is, we're complaining that it looks like any other normal show on Cartoon Network. I guess it's just a statement that we felt this show really upped Cartoon Network's game exponentially. <sighs> on a network that I think still does pretty well, I'm not. that's not a slam against Cartoon Network, I'm just like... They've been doing well, and now the bar just again has been so raised. Well, it was such a... This was just so fascinating. Like I said, I've never really seen anything quite like this. There's definitely hints of, like, you know, a kind of Adventure Time and, and stuff like that. But it's like, I've never seen anything quite quite this original. Uh, and, and it's such a wonderful breath of fresh air that they would throw, you know, this money at this very bizarre story with this bizarre layout. And, I mean, just these little vignettes and, what well, was it, over five nights or something like that. And there's a little bit of a continuing story, but not really. Like, I, I, I was telling him when, during that scene with the dream sequence and stuff like that, I said, you know, if I was an animator on this, I would have no idea if this was good. You, <laughs> particularly the first couple minutes of that scene with the little angels wandering around and the we represent the cloud just, okay, people. If that's what you want, like, man. If yeah, you're I, I would have been I, sitting there. I'm like, I well, no I want a paycheck, this. but man, this could be Batman and Robin. I'm working at I have no <laughs> freaking idea. Yeah. Like, this looks crazy. Um, But at the same time, I do kind of like that it is a special where it is hard to pinpoint exactly what it is or what you clarify it as like if i was just tell someone like in a sentence what it is it'd be tricky not that it can't be done but it would be difficult to do you can't just say oh it's weird and bizarre it's like well no so i'm like ren stimpy's weird and bizarre or adventure time or something it's like how it, it's like there's something else about a journey it. it's like a journey through american folklore it's like washington irving mm -hmm. like rip van winkle sleepy hollow it feels yeah, the folklore especially it feels yeah. like that Oh. Um, <laughs> with really, you didn't turn your cell phone off. You okay. sneeze. You, you have to I did not your phone. sneeze. You did Hell not sneeze. Make up you for couldn't even sneeze right. No, true. Um, but yeah, like Washington Irving stories. Um, you know, as I was mentioning last, when scary stories to tell in the dark, those old American folklore tales that were spooky and. Um, yeah, mixed with, you know, like, nods to Dante's Inferno and stuff. Yeah, or but, Alice in Wonderland yeah. and, uh, uh, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, and even, like, the old 20s cartoon. It just, just anything kind of old. <laughs> you know, even the 70s somehow got in there, I guess. Um, yeah, and I, w I will say, it's, a lot of it seems to be also kind of based on, like, faith and, you know, because he loses hope and then the brother tries to save him and then the older brother comes in and tries to save him and then there's, like, this the kids' souls keep the lantern alive, and, like, I don't know. I guess if you want to make the argument, it's an allegory for the soul, like Dante's Inferno, I, you could. I, yeah, I, I, and I'm not saying you can't make, like, allegories or connections to something or, like, find something deeper. You there's totally a, yeah, can. There's aspects of, like, Dante's Inferno and other things there. I'm just not sure if that was the reason for it existing. Like, if anything, I like a story more that isn't just, this is just blank. You yeah. know, I like where it's like, it's elements of this, elements of that, sort of come together and create something kind of new that we haven't seen. Yeah, uh, when people so say, really like, like oh, I'm writing a Valentine to, like, Dante's Inferno, that's just Hollywood code word for ripoff. This seems <laughs> more than that. You know, this seems like something where just, like, I have a whole bunch of ideas and vaguely like Dante's Inferno. Like, yeah. that, there's a difference there. Very, so. very vaguely, yeah. You know, I, I, I still wouldn't call this, like, Dante's Inferno for kids. I mean, no. it, just, it doesn't sound right. It's just, it's more than that. There's I so wouldn't, many I wouldn't have recognized it. I'm like, okay, well, these aren't pits of hell. Like, everybody seems to get a happy ending at the end. I mean, it's really far removed in a lot of ways. It's just there's little nods to it. Yeah, so, uh... I really liked it. I, I liked that I can't quite pinpoint what it is or how to describe it or uh, or any of that stuff, but I like how it kept me intrigued the whole time. It wasn't like, and joke, this is supposed to make you laugh or it's supposed to make you think. It's just sort of this weird, like, just escape of subconsciousness, <laughs> you know, just like, hey, you know, just when you're kind of half awake, half asleep and, you know, 
this is the kind of story that we're going to tell. It's like while you're half awake, half asleep. You uh, know what? I know how to describe it. It's like myths. Beautiful lies. Beautiful lies. Uh, so yeah, any final thoughts on it? I'd say I want a sequel series, but I don't know how you go back. So, I no, I just thought it was amazing. And I want the soundtrack. Too. Yeah, so do I. Um, I really like the music disc. I would say a sequel series. I, I do like... Yeah, or, or maybe like what they do with Avatar, like maybe like a spin-off or something. No, you know, I don't even want that. I just want the same people to do something different because this was different exactly. and it was great and I love to see what they do. Um, you know, like, you know, the Animaniacs to Tiny Toons. That, that's what I like. You know, someone's like, go. hey, this isn't a sequel, you but would it's recognize, the same yeah, people. You would recognize it as being the same people, even though it's kind of different. Yeah. So, uh, good stuff, and we'll see you next time. Watch it. Beautiful lie. Beautiful.